Greetings. I'm your host, Christopher Rice, and welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. I'm happy to introduce our guest today, Elena Voloshin. Elena Voloshin is an international reporter, camerawoman, and filmmaker. She holds master's degrees in cultural journalism and political science. She is the Moscow bureau chief for France 24 and has covered the annexation of Crimea, war in East Ukraine, and former Soviet bloc for Francophone TV and radio. Elena is the co-director of the documentary Oleg's Choice, which captures the perspectives of two Russian volunteers in the conflict in Ukraine. Today, Elena will talk to us about propaganda and the state of media in Russia and Ukraine, and what truth means in media today. Elena, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having me. Of course. Elena, you've been reporting in and around Russia for over eight years. Can you share your experiences dealing with state-supported propaganda and the effect it has on the general public? Well, it has a huge effect today in the public in Russia. And actually, the propaganda in its very massive uh, phenomenon started... We, we have heard about the propaganda during the Soviet times, uh, mm. but in uh, modern history it has uh, become also a very massive uh, way of uh, influencing the opinion and even if, to leading the war. It's a very important element, mm. as a very famous Russian propagandist told me, if you win the propaganda war, you will win the war on mm. the ground. Mm. And actually what happened with the annexation of Crimea, during the annexation of Crimea, and even prior to that, a few months uh, before that, is that Vladimir Putin has launched a very massive propaganda campaign yeah. to denigrate the revolution of Maidan and to introduce it as a coup, uh, as a chaos, and as a war in the heart of Ukraine, which mm. has been provocated by criminals, bandits, and actually the terms also used for the revolutionaries the revolutionaries was fascists. Mm. Uh, so it was the revolution of Maidan has been presented in Russia as uh, uh, this uh, chaos orchestrated by the United States. And mm. it has played on a very deep fear and emotions of the Russian people who has been raised in this culture of their grandparents finding the Nazis. So they have been told that this evil, the, na the fascist evil, the Nazi evil has reborn in Ukraine. And this propaganda has been so massive, so uh, awful and so aggressive that uh, we also need to understand that it has had massive effects on the brains of all this part uh, of the world, mm -hmm. uh, the Russian speaking world, I mean, because um, in Russia, we have never had the culture of democracy, of pluralism. Mm -hmm. So people, they don't even have the skills or the reflex to put on critics what the state propaganda brings them. They can even, I may say, if I may say, defend themselves from it and have this critical way of thinking to put in a doubt right, what right. is brought to them as an information, what is presented as an information. So it has led to very heavy consequences because um, a whole part of the world today uh, saw the rewriting of modern history. Mm -hmm. And they are convinced that the history, the modern history, the history of this conflict in Ukraine and with Ukraine is totally different of what it is in reality. Mm -hmm. And today nobody knows who is wrong and who is right. Uh, in this part of the world. So it's, it's pretty uh, scary to see that and to live in this context and to work as a journalist in, in this context. Oh, I'm sure. You've covered the Russian annexation of Crimea in addition to armed conflicts in East, East Ukraine. Talk to us about what it's like to operate in a war zone and why you're there despite the dangers. There are some dangers which uh, to a journalist are common to any war zone when there is a shelling or gunfire or whatever, I mean, it's it's a war, so of course you risk your life, but I think there is something which is, again, very particular in this war. It's the propaganda, and how is it dangerous to us? It's, be, it's because, um, as for example, in Crimea, there wasn't the war. Uh, it was, if I may say, a peaceful annexation. Mm. Uh, we, show, we, we saw the army, the Russian army surrounding Ukrainian uh, positions and uh, military bases. We saw gunmen, we saw all these military mercenaries 
who were there, but we, we thought maybe it could lead to a war, but there was no, not a single shot fired. Right. So the, it, there was a war. But still, the situation was quite dangerous, especially for Western journalists, because people were, were um, dressed so, uh, brought so aggressive towards everything that came from the West. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we would even be beaten or uh, harassed or followed by some people who tried just to, to take us uh, our equipment or to block our cameras oh, wow. or to, yeah, it was a very, very difficult situation. People were just so aggressive because they saw us as, um, uh, as the media who were supporting the Nazis from Kiev. <laughs> that's, that's very destabilizing for a journalist because right, yeah. everyone around is just convinced of something which just doesn't exist. And you are a witness of a situation which you don't even understand because no one here came to tell us, oh, guys, there is going to be an annexation, you know, can we report about it, please? <laughs> no, we are, we are seeing checkpoints arise on the roads. We are seeing military men. We don't understand who they are because there were no signs at all. Nobody would tell us what's happening, and we must report on that. And this is very destabilizing. It's not to talk about the danger, but just the condition of work for a journalist in this kind of situation. And as for, for East Ukraine, it was quite the same, but plus the war. And yeah. so journalists, they were also taken as targets by the pro-Russian side. I mean, Western journalists, because they were seeing as people who support Kiev and the yeah. revolution of Maidan. We were not supporting, but we were just trying to, to tell the truth about it. It was right. a pro-European, pro first peaceful revolution, but these uh, people have been shot uh, at by some snipers. So, I mean, and it turned out into something very violent, but still it was a popular revolution coming from people just to, because they wanted to be in Europe. But it was a completely different story that has been told in East Ukraine by the Russian state TV propaganda. So this situation, I don't know if it was really dangerous, but it was quite... It uh, sounds dangerous. It was dangerous, but it was rather, you know, psychologically very mm. difficult to, to cope with. Like, very difficult. Because yeah. you, you just don't understand how, how... You must adapt. You must adapt. You must cope with it in, in some way. And you are always finding, searching for how can you just do your job in these conditions. Yeah, I'm sure. So you've co-directed Oleg's Choice, which follows young Russians driven by propaganda, questioning the narratives in Russian media. What was the most shocking part about that experience for you? Again, it was not uh, that very experience which, which was shocking because at the time we started this film, we have spent quite a lot of time there also, so we were a bit aware of the situation. Mm -hmm. the, the most shocking part maybe was that. It was that all this part of the world was being living in a big lie and um, and... At some point, you just start questioning yourself, but am I the idiot here who doesn't understand something? <laughs> or <laughs> all the people around are crazy me, uh, or are, are, are crazy? What happened? You're like in an open sky asylum. So like, it's very, very destabilizing. It's shocking. It's shocking. Because you, you, you see the history uh, being rewrited. Re you see the truth uh, being devaluated. You're being yeah. just like... It, the truth means nothing uh, anymore. So this is, I think, the most shocking thing, especially for me, because I am Russian, so I, I am part of this history. I'm not, just, I'm ju not just a neutral observer. I think for my Western colleagues who, who are foreigners, it's quite easier because it's not so emotional to them. But for me, it was something which was like really shocking because I, I, I wanted... Just as a journalist, you have a deep sense of, you know, justice, honesty. Right. I mean, when you're a good journalist, <laughs> I try to be one. So, you, you, yeah, you want to bring out some, some, some truth, some information, and, and, and you just, it's really hard. So this is, yeah, this is shocking. I'm sure. Well, in your documentary, one of the characters states, people are certain that they've come here to fight for the truth. The truth exists, but you see, everyone has their own. Talk to us about what this quote means to you. It means a lot, and I, I, I even remember myself, because this conversation with my character were, were very long and very intense, and these interviews was like really, really 
I, I, I felt that we, we are bringing out something very important here because there are fighters, nobody would tell the truth about these conflicts, but mm -hmm. now we get a very like important confession from them on what's happening in reality because in all this space of propaganda where everything is a lie, we are targeting, we are, we are getting some truth out of here. And when yeah. he told me this sentence, I remember myself just shivering because I, I, I wouldn't expect anything else from him to tell. Like, yes, he admits the truth exists. And it's important also to know that the truth exists because you can get lost in the space mm -hmm. yourself as a journalist. You just try to stick to a version that you saw at the very beginning when you were on Maidan, when you, you saw what happened there. You know who are these peoples, but when there is a war and all its propaganda, you can lose the truth. Mm -hmm. You can start even to doubt in this uh, version that you really saw, you know it exists. So two parts of this sentence are important to me. When Max say everyone has, its, its own, uh, has their own truth, yes, in this space everyone has their own truth. And this is because there is a war. It's a war of propaganda. Right. First of all, it's a war of, to, to, to know who is right and who is wrong in the truth. And this re, uh, relies to the world we are living in. It's not only the situation, because in our world today, an opinion is an information for people, in people's mind. They right. think that opinions are information. They can tell you whatever from any source they take, not reliable sources, what they read from internet. Everyone thinks they can be a journalist if they write something, mm -hmm. because our profession is quite hard to define. And after all, you have all these debates about fake news and the politicians and the communicants who are not the informators, they point at journalists and they say, you are fake news, and the journalist he has been decriminalized, and what can he do else? He is the one who is supposed to bring the information, but the politician tells him, you are not the informator, you are the communicant, I'm the informator. Right, right. I mean, this is a very confusing situation. This, it's a world we are living in today, the, what we call the, po the era of post-truth. So, post-truth. Post-truth, yeah. I call it like that, and some other people do as well, because the truth is began, be, being very hard to find. It's almost a philosophical uh, theory, uh, in philosophy, you have the theories that says, does the world exist in itself or does it exist because there are people to perceive it? Mm -hmm. So today I feel like we are living in a world which exists only the way people perceive just, it. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and to find the truth is very, very difficult. So these fighters, Max and Oleg, are there. They, they, they came here to find out the truth and they find out completely something else. And there is no truth there. Everyone has in his version of, of the war, of the conflict of, of what's happening. So what are they going to do now? You can, as a fighter or as a journalist, you can even go mad because the fighter, he is ready to, leave, to give his life. Mm -hmm. What for? For a lie. The journalist, he is ready to give his life. What for? For a lie also. And this is so confusing. But when Max says the truth exists, this was very important to me. Because yeah. just remember, when you are in this crazy situation, that the truth does exist. So if you are a real journalist, you just it's find it. It's somewhere out there. It's somewhere there. So you just find it, you fight for it, you struggle to find it, and you bring it out. And this is the core of our profession. <laughs> great. Uh, Elena, that's a great lead into our last question. Given the issues associated with and the impact of propaganda, what can an average citizen do to differentiate between what is truth and what is propaganda? And what techniques can they use to ensure information is accurate? There are techniques to use, but first of all, the person must have the will to find it mm. and to understand that the, it's not... The, Truth it, won't be handed to yeah, you. Yeah, it might not be obvious. Well, as for the techniques, uh, you can look for reliable sources of information, what we call rel reliable sources. It's like traditional and media who are settled for a long time and I think still we can trust the media which are considered to do a real journalistic job without, uh, uh, without um, not linked to any interests. I mean, in, in a democracy, mm -hmm. you still have some media who, wh whatever the uh, owner, uh, are working according to an ethics code and to some rules, right. um, and which aim is to bring the information out. So just let's still trust the serious media, because it's very important. Because if we don't, I mean, 
there is no point in 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 in, uh, in, in our profession anymore. Uh, you also can uh, just just beware of all the um, complotists uh, alternative websites uh, of all these th complotist theories because as as soon as a, a, a website or a media pretends to bring you an alternative information. Yeah to bring you something like, oh, you didn't see it anywhere, but here, you know what, we, we are telling you this, and this is where the truth is, no. I mean, often it's either someone's just own opinion, right. either it's there are some interests behind there, and it's an organization, pro-governmental, or a lobby. I'm very much thinking here of this Russian state-owned media as uh, like RT, Russia mm -hmm. Today, or the Sputnik press agency, so-called press agency, because they are really propagandist media, and it's not information media. We really have to understand it. And it's very tricky because they introduce themselves as uh, media. And right. juridically and from the outside, they look like traditional um, information news channels or press agencies or information website, but they are not. And this is very tricky. Um, when it comes to some memes or photos or anything, if you really find something interesting with what you don't see anywhere else, then you can look for some fact checkers, uh, professional people mm. who really yeah. are specialized in, um, in finding uh, the, the, the uh, intox or the info. But I think that, yes, the most important thing is that you have to look for it. You have to bear in mind that everything in our world is not information. I think it happens because of a lack of confidence of people uh, towards the traditional media, which might be justified because for a very long time, the professional uh, corporation, mediatic corporation, has been unable to question itself of how we bring information to people uh, there is kind of an ag arrogant position uh, bit among the media and the media professionals that we are an elite and we are bringing information from the top to the masses with no regards to what people are interested for in or how could they react to this. I mean, I think that that's a problem, but also because people are looking for sensation, they are looking right. for easy information, they yeah. don't try to understand things deeply. That's where there's, that's, there is a room for, for this kind of media who come and pretend to bring something fresh, new, alternative, and people are on, deman on demanding for that. This is, this is what's dangerous. Just beware like when you want something new, fresh, like n don't look for these uh, sources on, of information because it's not information. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Pleasure <laughs> to have you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for this edition of Cyber Focus. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or topic suggestions, please engage with us at cyber, that's C-I-B-E-R, cyber, at indiana.edu.